Hi there, it's Jen from Dejan Eats. Welcome to another of our video tutorials. Today we're going to make bread. The thing that so many people are afraid of, we're going to show you how easy it is to make. You can make it at home, you'll never buy the stuff at the store again. Today working with me, we have my grandmother, Cynthia. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> She's visiting from Jamaica. She'll be staying with us for a few months. And while she was here, we really went over bread making and she makes bread just about every day. So she will be making it today for us. So we start out with a pound of bread flour. A lot of you might wonder what's the difference between bread flour and all-purpose flour that most people use. Well, it's mostly the protein content. Um, bread flour has higher protein content, so it gives it more gluten. So it gives it a, a chewier texture when you're biting into it, as opposed to, say, all-purpose flour, which has a lower protein content, or uh, pastry flour, cake flour, that has the lowest of all. That is what gives the cake the light, airy feeling. If you don't have bread flour, you can always use all-purpose flour, and I'll show you how to adjust it going there. So we start out with one pound of flour. It's most important to try and measure it. That way, it'll always be consistent. A pound of flour is a pound of flour. A cup of flour, not so much. It depends on how you actually measure it. But if you don't have a kitchen scale like the one seen here, don't worry about it. Um, you can use roughly three and a half cups of flour. So Miss Cynthia is gonna start out for us. The first thing you wanna add to the flour is a teaspoonful of yeast. One teaspoon, yeah. <laughs> this method is the one pot method. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. this, this method is the one pot method because we're using instant dry yeast. If you were using just dry yeast that's not instant, you would have to proof it first and add it to the water and the oil. But with instant, just go ahead and add it straight to your flour. To that, we'll add two tablespoonfuls of sugar. Go ahead, put it all in. And four tablespoonfuls, that's about half a stick, of very cold butter cut into small cubes. All right. And now um, she's going to mix it up with her fingers so that it will resemble breadcrumbs. You really can't do this in the machine. Go ahead and mix it up. You really can't do this in the machine. You won't get the right consistency. When you coat the starch with the butter, you really give it a, a lighter feel, a buttery feel. This is what is called um, an enhanced bread. <laughs> Enriched bread, I completely forgot the word. Um, you have lean doughs, like your baguettes. Those are just uh, flour and yeast and water, essentially. Um, but this is an enriched dough because it has the fats, it has the butter, it has the sugar. Sometimes uh, you can add milk. And that'll take you a few minutes to go through that. To that, we are going to add a cup and three tablespoonfuls of water. This is warm water. You, wanna, you don't want to make it hot because it will kill the yeast but you don't want to make it too cold because you need to kind of wake the yeast up. So we get it, um, just tap water from the, from the pipe, just that will be warm enough. Um, you don't want to go anywhere over 118 to 120 degrees when you're doing this. Go ahead. And you notice it's a cup and three tablespoons full. The difference between this and if you were to use all-purpose flour, for example, go ahead and mix it, that's fine. You would only use one cup of water. That's because the all-purpose flour doesn't have as much protein as the bread flour, so it doesn't need as much liquid. Okay. And to that, we're going to add a teaspoon and a half of salt. We add the salt after the yeast and the flour have been activated by the water. The, the salt tempers the yeast. That means all the, f the crazy activity that the yeast does, the salt kind of says, you know, calm down guys, we're gonna do this a little bit more structured. So if you add the salt to the yeast, you won't get as much rice, but if you activate the flour, if you get it wet, get the flour and the yeast and some liquid before you add the salt, then the salt won't temper the yeast quite as much. 
and she's going to need that. Normally, if I'm by myself, I'll do that in our KitchenAid, if you can see it back there, using the dough hook. You would need that for about eight minutes, but she doesn't like to use a machine, she uses her hands. So for those, um, those of you guys at home who might not have a mixer, uh, feel free, you can always make the dough with your hands. I don't know if you can see what she's doing. She's turning it and folding it in on itself. And she's gonna keep doing this for a few minutes until it's smooth. So you're done kneading? Yeah. You're done? Okay. Guys, I want you to take a look at the dough. It is very smooth. This is what you want it to look like if you are doing it in the mixer too, or if you're doing it by hand. You wanna make sure it's very smooth. It shouldn't be um, sticking to your fingers, but just tacky. See? Okay. If for some reason, it is a little bit sticky because it depends on your um, your altitude and the temperature too. You might get the dough a little bit stickier even if you're using the same ingredients. But no matter what, do not be tempted to add more flour. The solution is really simple. You add some grease, some oil to your fingers and to the surface or the bowl that you're mixing it in. That will cause it to not stick to you, but you won't keep adding flour which will make it a denser dough. So right now, she's going to form it into a ball you want to give it a smooth surface so that when it rises, it has a smooth surface to rise on. And this will be the first of two rises for the bread. That's shaping it into a smooth ball. And what do you do after this? Oil it. <laughs> you oil the bowl and you oil the dough. Go ahead. Just a little bit of oil around the surface of the bowl, not too much. And then you oil the dough. This is just to make sure, guys, as while it's, it's rising, the top that might be exposed to air, it doesn't get too crisp. Because if it gets crisp and dried out, it makes it that much more difficult to work mm -hmm. with. When you're ready to shape it, yes, you can put it in. You put it in the bowl and you cover it with a clean cloth and put it aside in a dark place for 45 minutes and we'll be back and we'll show you how to roll it out. All right guys, it has been 45 minutes for the first rise. We're going to uncover it and roll it and shape it into our bread. Go ahead. Ta-da! <laughs> That's what it looks like after 45 minutes. So what my grandmother is going to do, she's going to oil the surface that she's going to roll it on. She's gonna put a little bit of olive oil on that surface. She has already put some olive oil in the bread pan because you wanna get just enough to do the bottom and the edges. All right. Good. Mm -hmm. Now she's gonna take out the dough all right. And she'll form it into a rectangle. First, she's going to punch it down or slap it down with a little bit more energy. Mama, slap it. <laughs> okay. She's shaping it into a rectangle as she goes along. And that's important because we're going to roll it up like a jelly roll <laughs> to form the bread. Right, that's good. <laughs> the reason we want to roll the bread, roll the dough into its shape rather than just taking the whole dough and pushing it into one particular shape, when you roll and tuck, it gives the dough more structure. So the bread, well, the slices will be more uniformed and it won't collapse on itself. You can start rolling. And we're going to roll and tuck. Go ahead. So you make tiny rolls and pinch. Good. If you notice, she's rolling, and as she's rolling, she's pinching the sides and pulling it in. She's tucking it. You're getting better. <laughs> 
When we first started making bread, she'd call me to roll it, but now she rolls it on her own. She's a pro. <laughs> Take the sides, pinch, fold in, bring it in. Okay, good. And if you notice, it's a little bit longer than the bread pan. That's fine. It doesn't need to be perfect. You just need to get the rolling structure. So once she's done that, she is using her wrist, not your fingers, <laughs> your wrist, to make sure it is sealed. And then you can always just squish it to fit whatever pan you have. Got it. And you squish it in. And make sure the side that's folded, it goes in the bottom of the pan. Starting to look like a bread. And that's it you guys. This is all you do for the, um, to shape it into the bread. Now it's going to do the second rise. You cover it. Comfortable? <laughs> She's a perfectionist, I'm not. You cover it and let it rise, maybe till it's about the top, which will take maybe about an hour, hour and a half, and then we bake. Guys, it has been 25 minutes. We've taken this out of the oven and look at it. It is gorgeous. And my grandmother is going to show you what you need to do to make sure it pops out of the pan. Go ahead. A little bit more force than that dainty. All right. <laughs> and that's it. When you pop it like that, it should just easily come out and you won't have to worry about the bottom sticking to the pan. Um, what she's going to do now is butter the top. Go ahead. And that will give it a nice sheen and kind of soften the top just a little bit. Because who doesn't like a butter top, really? And that's it, guys. You let it sit in the pan for another five minutes. And after that, you take it out. Uh, it is recommended, I'll tell you, to wait for at least half an hour before you cut into the bread. But really, who makes bread to wait half an hour? You can go ahead and cut right into it if you want to. We won't tell anybody. Guys, it has been wonderful hanging out with you again. Um, please visit DejanEats.com for more cooking tips and recipes. It was fun. Let's cook together. Say bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>